this is a case of 73 year old male who presented with a history of uh, hematuria weight loss abdominal mass and um, there was no metastasis at the time of presentation clinically uh, they suspected as a left renal uh, cell carcinoma and um, we received nephrectomy specimen along with the hilar nodes as we can see here there is a uh, quite a large tumor with a bosulated appearance adherence to the capsule uh, this is a cut surface this is a very fleshy gray white uh, tumor with some sort of an world areas these are the areas of necrosis little preserved renal parenchyma this is a renal pelvis tumor is infiltrating the uh, renal sinus extending into the perinephric fat here another view on either side of the renal pelvis this is the tumor which you can see at a closer view this is the renal pelvis and this is the tumor and little bit of renal parenchyma is preserved uh, and it was homogeneously uh, gray white uh, there were no different looking areas we made a thorough search for different looking areas but uh, it was homogeneously uh, gray white uh, so let me uh, shift gears to the um, digital pathology and uh, these are the microscopic sections this is a lopa view as you can see it's a very highly cellular tumor with a lot of blue appearance uh, this is a closer view the tumor cells are arranged in fascicles these are arranged in fascicles with a few foci of necrosis and the uh, area to show the areas of necrosis and we here again to show the uh, fascicular arrangement of the tumor cells uh, it was uniformly composed of these spindle cells these spindle cells they uh, were having a uh, spindle to oval nuclei uh, some of having uh, conspicuous nucleoli a uh, few multinucleated genes were also seen and these are the mitotic figures uh, this is uh, mainly to show uh, the section which we took at the renal sinus area this is the pelvis and as you can see the tumor is encroaching into the renal sinus fat and these are the areas of uh, necrosis this is a closer view with the tumor encroaching the renal sinus fat as well as they were these are the areas of necrosis so it's a very highly cellular tumor with the areas of necrosis and there was thin uh, sliver of adrenal which was seen in the periphery grossly and it was uh, free of tumor this is a microscopy showing the adrenal looks free of tumor but the tumor is infiltrating into the perinephric uh, perinephric sinus as you can see here it is irregular and uh, we also uh, dissected out uh, some hilar lymph nodes uh, closer view to show that they are uh, free of tumor we did uh, perform a battery of uh, ihc panel and uh, the tumor cells were uh, clearly negative for uh, pan cytokeratin and uh, they were positive for desmin this is a closer view to show that the tumor cells were diffusely positive for uh, desmin and uh, the tumor cells were also positive for uh, sma this is a closer view they were all positive for uh, sma as well cd117 was negative so coming back to my uh, uh, powerpoint presentation so as you can see uh, to summarize my hc uh, panel pan cytokeratin was negative desmin sma were positive and cd117 was negative so thus we gave uh, two possibilities one was uh, leiomyosarcoma involving the kidney and second was the pus sarcomatoid tumor we made a thorough search for the carcinomatous component but we didn't find any different looking areas but it was homogeneously um, gray white so we thought the other possibility was a pus sarcomatoid tumor the perinephric fat and renal sinus were involved by tumor rhabdoid morphology was not evident adrenal was free all of the cut margins were also free and as it was an r0 uh, resection the patient uh, uh, did not receive any adjuvant chemotherapy uh, so coming to the spindle cell tumors when uh, of the kidney whenever we get spindle cell tumors we need to entertain this differential diagnosis 
of which uh, leomyoma is a benign component and uh, and uh, when it is a malignant looking we need to have the sarcomatoid tumor as a differential other primary sarcomas like leomyosarcoma rhabdo and all this list of tumors we need to uh, have in our differential before coming to a diagnosis of this leomyosarcoma is supposed to be uh, common rarely we can also have gist of renal parenchyma uh, coming to the leomyosarcomas the these account for less than 1% of all renal malignancies most commonly seen in adults uh, with presentation as abdominal pain and hematuria so where do they arise they arise from the renal capsule renal parenchyma pelvic muscular wall as well as the main renal vein so we should have a, a, a good idea of the ihc markers which are positive in these tumors these are positive for sma desmin and carl desmond they are negative for uh, cytokeratin and dma and all these markers uh, it is uh, good to be cognizant of the ihc markers because uh, judicious use of ihc markers is very important we do not want to give any surprises to our patient when he sees his hospital bill so regarding the prognosis they may metastasize to lung liver and bone and what are the factors which are influencing the outcome it is the complete resection grade and tumor size so other differential which is a sarcomatoid tumor it is not a distinct entity as such but in a renal cell carcinoma if there is an epithelial and mesenchymal transition then it, it falls under this category it is a very aggressive phenotype and uh, even a focal sarcomatoid component is associated with poor prognosis suppose we come across a carcinomatous component suppose uh, for example if it's a clear cell carcinoma we label it as a clear cell carcinoma with a sarcomatoid uh, component in case we are not able to find any particular renal subtype in this then we usually put it in the pure sarcomatoid uh, uh part and make uh, put it in the category of unclassified renal cell carcinoma please bear it in mind all the uh, rccs with sarcomatoid carcinoma they fall under this uh, with uh, predominantly which are having the sarcomatoid morphology they are graded under grade 4 so what are the uh, rccs which can have uh, this kind of sarcomatoid component are the clear cell papillary chromophore collecting duct and others uh please keep it in mind the rhabdoid uh, regions are not equal to sarcomatoid component but you need to report if there are any rhabdoid areas and the sim they have the similar uh, clinical presentation and they are known to metastasis and they have also have an aggressive behavior and they metastasize to lungs and bones so thus even you find a spindle cell tumor benign looking with no mitosis and necrosis uh with a smooth muscle look Uh, put it under leomyoma if we have an admixture of vessels spindle cells as well as fat this is a downloaded image and if they are positive for hmb45 and sma put it under this category of uh, angiomyolipoma it has a sarcomatous look with lot of mitosis necrosis and pleomorphism please look for an rcc subtype in case you are able to um, make out an rcc subtype put it in the under category in that particular category and call it with a particular category with a sarcomatoid change and if we are finding mainly sarcomatous component we need to exclude all the sarcomas which i have listed earlier so as we all know the uh, tumors don't read books so we know that sometimes this rcc with sarcomatoid can have patchy uh, pancytokeratin expression and may have sma expression but what will come to a rescue is the desmin usually in leomyosarcomas we get this desmin positivity so we can uh, take the help of desmin and uh, as we all believe uh, that the grossing is cornerstone for pathology and for the benefit of students i would like to take just 2 minutes uh of time uh, so that uh, i would like to emphasize the importance of blocking of sections so we take usually uh, sections from the uh, ureter renal vessels hyla vessel cut margin interface with the perinephric fat interface with the renal sinus ureters any nodes or any adrenal so why do we take so much of pain please i would like the to uh, you know reiterate that uh, whatever the grossing we are uh, take doing 
it is getting translated to the core data items and non core data items which we are putting in our protocol reporting and that is in turn influencing the patient's prognosis so these are the list of core data items which the student should bear in mind when they are grossing so uh, for example the size it definitely has an influence on the uh, stage of the tumor and please bear in mind that any tumor which is more than 70 mm unlikely to be renal confined if there is renal vein involvement macroscopically we need to confirm it microscopically as an adherence of thrombus to the vessel wall at the margin why is it important it has a, a local recurrence similarly involvement of ivc it upstages the tumor and uh, why why we should look at the gross thoroughly because if there are different looking tumors then there there is chance that we may have different uh, combination of tumors and we all know that clear cell carcinoma does worse than papillary than the promofo so all uh, the collecting duct carcinomas focal sarcomatoid change rhabdoid morphology are of worse prognosis so even as we know grading influences the prognosis why do we take uh, sections from the perinephric fat because it upstages to tumor and we need to mention the minimal distance from the perinephric fat as well as hilar soft tissue margin uh, please bear in mind that oncocytomy is an exception to this rule uh, we can have a perinephric fat invasion as well as vascular invasion in oncocytomas why is renal sinus fat is important as we know that it is highly vascular in that area and this is why we can get extra renal spread when there is renal sinus involvement if it is overtly involved then a single section will be enough suppose if we are not able to identify grossly a renal sinus involvement minimum of 3 blocks will be necessary i am again reemphasizing the fact any tumor which is more than 70 mm it is unlikely to be a renal confined if there is adrenal involvement it could be a direct involvement we will put it under t4 category if it is discontinuous it will fall under metastasis please look for uh, normal areas for other non neoplastic medical disease which influence the prognosis if there are multiple tumors please sample the largest five tumors or small grossly differing tumors why especially in younger age group if there is a family history we do not want to miss the hereditary syndromes and nodal status number of the nodes involved extra nodal involvement is very important we know that the papillary carcinomas and collecting duct carcinomas are known to have a nodal involvement in perinephric fat and renal sinus fat involvement that does that alone doesn't put under pt3a it is even the vessels which are involving the perinephric fat and renal sinus fat can also put it uh, can also will upstage the tumor involvement of pelvis will also put it under pt3a and we know that the collecting duct carcinoma arises at the medullary area and uh, we need to sample this pelvis area to know the epicenter and last but not the least the margins they if these are margins or all involved it results in local recurrence and poor overall survival so thus uh, there are other non core data items which mainly depend upon the extent of necrosis and the arcomotoid change and risk score assessment like our npi index which we do it for breast this also influence the um, uh, risk assessment in the patient so thus my take home message is um, this uh, sarcomas or leoma sarcomas they do not have a distinct radiological or clinical findings to distinguish from rcc so the for the clinician they, it may look like an rcc so it is we who uh, who will be able to identify this tumor and when we find a sarcomatous component please search for different looking areas especially for a carcinomatous component why it is definitely falling into the uh, grade of 4 even a force uh, even a focal sarcomatoid component will put it under uh, worst prognostic category and uh, if in case we are not able to identify carcinomatous component and only sarcomatous areas we need to distinguish from the other sarcomas which are uh, arising in the renal parenchyma